Hi, this is Mike Stryko with the Devers Eye Institute in Portland, Oregon. Here I'm doing a case of DMEC surgery or decimase membrane endothelial keratoplasty for Fuchs corneal dystrophy. I've made diamond paracentesis incisions of one millimeter, filled the anterior chamber with helon, and made a keratome incision. Here I'm using a bent 30 gauge needle to create a peripheral iridotomy. This is to help prevent uh, pupillary block from the air bubble. And I'm marking an 8.0 millimeter bed. That'll be the resection area where I'll remove the host decimase membrane and implant the uh, DMEC corneal transplant graft. I'm scoring the edges of the uh, area to be removed and there I'm removing the decimase membrane and enlarging the incision to about three millimeters with a crescent blade and test fitting that my B cartridge will fit. Used irrigation aspiration cannula to remove the helon, and this is my insertion cartridge. It's a modified Alcon B cartridge that's been attached to a syringe. This is my iBank prepared DMET graft. It's been pre stripped by Lion's Vision Gift. I'm going to punch it to a 7.75 millimeter graft size and removing the peripheral decimase membrane here. And now putting in some balanced salt solution, and I'm going to peel the central graft that again has been pre-stripped by Lion's Vision Gift in Portland, Oregon. You can see that comes up quite nicely. Now we'll add some tripan blue and put the graft back into the solution to stain the graft. I leave it in there for about 30 seconds and then remove the stained graft and place it into balanced salt solution and then aspirate it into the modified Alcon B cartridge that I'm using for my injector system. I insert this into the incision and inject the graft quite nicely. You can see the graft is trying to come back out into the injector system. Very important not to remove it while that's happening, not to remove the injector. I uh, release the pressure from the paracentesis to ensure that the graft doesn't try to eject through the main wound. Now you can see we have a very tightly scrolled graft. Tightly scrolled grafts can be a little more difficult to deal with than the uh, more ideal double scroll. So I'm trying to get it positioned ideally so that I can give a puff of balanced salt solution to unroll the graft. I want to keep the uh, interior chamber fairly shallow so when I get it to unfold like that it doesn't roll back up on itself. So you can see I'm repeatedly shallowing the interior chamber. And here I'm using a tapping technique using directed taps to create fluid waves to unscroll the graft. Now it's in a more desirable double scroll conformation that makes unfolding much easier. I have my finger from my other hand on the equator of the eye and I'm using that to further shallow the anterior chamber and to modulate the anterior chamber depth by varying the pressure of my finger on the equator. That way I can get it to unroll and not re-scroll up on itself. And further shallowing the anterior chamber and nudging the graft into position externally without ever touching the graft internally. I just have to unfold a couple little edges there and uh, have the graft nicely centered and unfolded at this point. I'm just getting it just perfectly centered here. And now I'm going to introduce a cannula. I want to inject the air uh, to fixate the graft in position, but I want to make sure that I'm doing this from a central location so I don't to push the graft out of centration. <clears throat> now I have the graft nicely uh, centered and locked in with air. I injected a little more air. You can see there's minimal cell dropout in the graft. There's a full thickness corneal laceration on this patient, which is sort of interesting. And I'm going to release some of the air at this point by transferring some balanced salt solution to the interior chamber and letting the air out to leave behind a smaller bubble to avoid any post-operative complications. Thank you very much for watching.